Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Fokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. I am starting with the next topic, the personal identity. And this is the first lecture of this series. And by definition, personal identity means the establishment, establishment of individuality of a person, living or dead, it is called as personal identity. By meaning by word, item which is a Latin word which means same and identity means individuality. So it is the sum of total characteristics of that particular individuality which makes its identity. And identification is the process of establishing identity. Identification of a person, whether living or dead, it means that the recognition of that person which is based upon certain physical characteristics which are unique to that individual. And determination of personal identity of accused or victim is an important medical legal issue whether it is for the living or for the dead and it has always been the duty of law enforcement agencies including the police. It is necessary in all medical legal cases as an individual he or she is a complete unit of innumerable characteristics which makes him unique and these characteristics they are inherent making him unique from others. So we have to choose the same or the similar and separate it from the dissimilar to establish the individuality or the personal identity. So this is the basis of this is on the Kutlet's rule. And Adolf Kutlet was a Belgian scientist or botanist and the rule says, the Kutlet's rule states that no two nature made things are ever alike. So this is the process which is termed as identification. Now the positive identification, it means the identification of a person without any doubt. And why the positive identification is needed? It is especially needed in a dead because we have to establish the identity without doubt and the necessity is that it resolves the anxiety of the next of kin or the relatives and the uh, parents of a person who is missing or presumed to be dead and to settle the estate issues of that person which is missing or presumed as dead. Then it is also helpful in establishing the corpus delicti which is the body or actual proof of the crime. So, to allow it, medical legal authorities to release the body for burial or disposal. So, this is also an important positive identification requirement. So, the identity may be either complete or partial. When we say complete, complete identification means absolute fixation of the individuality of that person and by partial identification we mean that this is the establishment of only some of the partial facts like race, age, sex, stature or any other parameter which helps in partial identification. Then what is the significance of identity? It is necessary for the civil matters or for the criminal investigation. 
the identification in living in civil cases like identification for religion insurance inheritance claims or marriage or disputed sex missing persons entry into service and retirement similarly the identification in living in criminal cases like in accident victims when there is mass disaster and we have to solve the identity mixed up or illegitimate babies then impersonation wanted criminals insane person the person was seen but he has lost memory so we have to establish the identity then absconding soldiers absconding soldiers becomes an important issue similarly the identification in dead for example the cases of travel accidents in explosion fire flood earthquake these are the cases of mass disaster where identity is a big issue unknown dead bodies which are found in the river forest or any abandoned place it's also a, a medical legal issue in cases of mutilated bodies decomposed bodies and skeletal remains or various other medical so the principles which guide to establish identity is that the approach should be systemic systematic we should proceed in a systematic way examination should be complete and subjective as well as objective methods should be utilized so what are the methods of identification they are the subjective method objective method and the third party method the subjective method is that the subject is in front of you in front of us and all the parameters from head to toe they help in its identity which includes certain characteristics as anatomical characteristics physiological characteristics pathological characteristics and genetical parameters like height weight congenital anomalies scar marks they all are helpful in identity regarding the anatomical parameters which are primary and the secondary the primary means which are present at the time of birth like the facial features and the secondary are and secondary which develop and appear with age the physiological parameters like the gait voice tone and the pathological parameters which may be due to disease such as eczema which make a permanent scar and genetic parameters like the blood groups inherited characteristics like the bar bodies they are the genetic parameters now the objective method of identification that means any object having an association with the subject and that individual may be having specific identity characteristics morphology like he may be fattest or the tallest in a college or in a community so this is his specific identity or any other object having an association with the subject which may be id card driving license passport his clothes belongings and the ornaments whereas in in decomposed bodies while when we are discussing the objective method the biological remains that is the hair nail bones which do not putrefy and they are washed and prepared for the physical examination microscopy and radiology they are helpful in objective method of identification similarly non biological material like his clothes other belonging the dress the tailoring mark and the laundry mark they help in identity then the third party method of identification mean then any third person helps in identity 
which may be his relatives, his friends or the police. The standard method of identification in Pakistan when the introduction of national identity, identity card was made and the following data was included in that card. The photograph, the permanent identity mark like the mole, scar mark or a signature, thumb impression, date of birth, age, name with parent age and the residential address. They are all included in the national identity card. But the difficulty arises in cases in which their identity card is not available or it cannot be produced. Then the phrasing medicine plays an important role in such situations. The orthodox or the old approach which prevents the application of fresh knowledge but a coordinated approach is better and other colleagues should be involved. An ideal team so in establishment of identity will be that it will be comprising of medical jurist or the forensic expert, forensic anatomist, forensic science expert, radiologist, serologist, histopathologist, bacteriologist and odontologist. Then the latest techniques which are present for identification they are the fingerprinting known as dactylography, lip printing, the chiloscopy, DNA fingerprinting, speech spect spectroscopy, voice printing, retinal blood vessel spectrum, shape and size of the iris, determination of blood groups, fingernail striation pattern, skull uh, suture pattern which is the surest method, frontal air sinus pattern which is done by the x-ray if it is present uh, in x-ray of life it can be compared and superimposed. Then the dental data if the previous record is available it can also be compared. Then the surest method of identification they are the finger DNA fingerprinting, dactylography, dental pattern, skull suture pattern and frontal sinus pattern. These are the surest methods of identification. So thank you very much. This is all about the first lecture of personal identity. I will continue in the next lecture. Take care. Please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar lectures on forensic medicine.